I uh, apologize for that little reading error of the chapters. We should begin at Genesis chapter 37, uh, verse 8. I apologize once again for that little error. And his brethren said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet even more with his dreams and for his words. Notes, the hatred that Joseph's brethren exhibited toward him represents the Jews in Christ's day. He came to his own, and his own received him not. He had no form nor comeliness in their eyes. They would not own him as the Son of God or as the King of Israel. They absolutely hated him, not as a whole, but probably as a majority. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made uh, uh, obeisance to me. Notes. Uh, this prophetically portrays the second coming, when all the tribes of Israel will, at the time, bow at the feet of Christ. That is confirmed in Zechariah chapter 12, 13, and 14, and we'll go on to verse 10. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to you to the earth? No, this is exactly what they did after Joseph became viceroy of Egypt. It is exactly what Israel as well will do in the coming glad days ahead. Verse 11. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Notes. Even though Jacob had rebuked Joseph, still the patriarch realized that there was more to this than just a mere dream. Verse 12. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem, which is about 50 miles distance. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not your brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you unto them. And he said unto him, Here am I. <clears throat> Notes. The short phrase, Here am I, foreshadows the statement of Christ, uh, Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me, I delight to do your will, O my God. Yes, your, your law is within my heart, that is in Psalms chapter 40, verses 7 and 8. <clears throat> Verse 14. And he who was Jacob and Israel said to him who was Joseph, Go, I pray you, see whether it is well with your brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he went, and so he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. Notes, all of this portrays the fact that Jacob little understood the degree of hatred the brothers had against, uh, had against Joseph. Verse 15, And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What do you seek? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray you, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. Notes, this is about 12 miles north of Shechem, making the total distance that Joseph had come a, prox a, a little bit over 60 miles. Uh, scripture. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to kill him. Notes, it was thus with Christ as well. When he was born, Herod sought to kill him, immediately, right out of the chute in Matthew chapter 2. The scripture, and, or actually verse 19, And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer comes. Notes, little did they realize that these dreams would come to pass exactly as recorded in the portrayal. Verse 20, Come now, therefore, and let us kill him, and cast him into the pit. And we will say, Some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Notes. 
we see here the ruling nature of sin right here. Verse 21. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. Notes. Reuben was the firstborn. This meant that when Jacob died, he would receive a double portion of the inheritance. However, the birthright had been given to Joseph. So Reuben would have had more to gain from Joseph's death than anyone, but he seemed to have a heart that wasn't totally hardened. Verse 22. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that it is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. Notes. He thought later to come back and rescue Joseph, as evidently he had to go somewhere, but he would come back too late. They would have sold Joseph as a slave what loving brothers he really had. Verse 23, And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. Notes, The flesh hates the spirit, the latter of which the coat was a type. However, when they took the coat, they did not take the anointing, for the coat was only a symbol of such. Verse 24, And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. Notes, when we look at Joseph in the pit and in the prison, and look at him afterwards as ruler over the land of Egypt, we see the difference between the thoughts of God and the thoughts of men. And so when we look at the cross and then the throne of the majesty of the heavens, we see the very same thing. Verse 25. And they sat down to eat bread. <laughs> Notes. Evidently their idea was when they put him in the pit to let him starve to death. But now a change of events comes about. Scripture. And they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery, uh, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us seal him come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Notes how they could be content with themselves I would I would like to question. Along with Reuben, Judah is the one who saved the life of Joseph, suggesting that they sell him as a slave. However, this was little an act of mercy on the part of Judah, inasmuch as under normal circumstances they were consigning him to a life probably worse than death. And uh, we will... Hmm, what chapter did I say? We're on chapter 37, and we will begin in Genesis chapter 37, verse... 28. Thank you once again.